My name is uh, Devin Foot. I'm 36. And what do you do for a living? Uh, I am an account manager with Payscape Advisors, mm -hmm. and I'm also a bartender. How do you like that? Uh, I'm trying to work my way out of the bartending. It's, you know, not something you want to do forever, but the money's pretty good. Very good. But now I have, you know, a second job and I'm working my way to getting out of the bartending. So how long have you been bartending? I've been bartending, man, probably 15 years of experience. 15 years. Like, That's a long time for someone who says that they don't want to do it forever. Yeah, I mean, uh, I want to say 15. Uh, 97, 2007, 19, 14 years. Uh, yeah. So college. you must enjoy doing it. Well, I didn't do it straight through. There was some time like, that I took off and I, I did Martin. You know, I got it. So, what do you enjoy about it? The money. The money. The ease of the job and the money. It's. And I'm halfway, you know, get to go there and be somebody else, put on a show. Let's go back for a second. It's easy. I mean, it's easier than doing, you know, visits, or I would say, but depending on, I mean, after you've had that much experience, it's somebody that's never done it, it's not easy, but where I am, it's, it's it's pretty easy. Mm -hmm. Easier, easier for. I mean, what you get paid, it's you know, you, you shouldn't complain too much. Don't you get bored with something that's so easy? Yes, and that, that's why I have another job. Mm -hmm. And how long have you been doing that? I've been there since uh, April. So I joined there in April, and so. Something that's more challenging for you? Oh, yes. Mentally? Yes. So I want to go back to something else that you said. You get to be someone else. <laughs> Why do you enjoy that? Uh, just to, I don't know, just, you know, fun. You, you know, just something to, something to do. Like, you know, I get to, when I say be somebody else, I, I get to, act out, you know, like like people do, like they wait for the weekend and they get to unwind and, and, and cut up. I get to do this and make money at the same time. So it's not really you, or it is? Uh, parts of it's me, because I'm, <laughs> I mean, I'm a shy person. Which, You're shy? I, yeah, it's, it's weird. I'm, I'm shy, but it's like, I don't know, like being on stage is like different. It's like, it's like acting, you know. So wait, you just called your bartending job a stage. You're not really on a stage, are you? Well, where I bartend, it, it kind of is a stage. I mean, we like, you know, if you ever watch the movie Cocktails, we sit there and we flip bottles and you know, we entertain. If I was at some place else where all I did was just make drinks, yeah, that's different. But part of our job there is to... What would someone have to know about you in order to understand you? What would someone have to know? Uh, so you have to know that... Huh, let's see here. Partly, I'm weird. Uh, weird? Yeah, because, I mean... I think I'm normal, but I hear from a lot of people, you're, you're, you're weird, you know. I was raised by my grandparents, which I believe that, you know, old school, traditional. Yeah. And growing up in a adult community living facility, because my grandparents, they ran one from their home, so it was on premise. So we had like 12 to 14 patients at any given time. Well, that, I mean, that, that could have something to do with it. So, what's 
So what would you say motivates you? What would I say motivates me? Uh, so right now, it would, it would have to be my, my son. You know, he's four, and I'm trying to build something for him to leave behind for him. Uh, and my grandmother, I call my mom, that supports me. You know, she always say supports me. She encourages me, and she's like, always, you know, like pumping me up. So that's a big, those are big motivators. Do you think they're proud of you right now? My grandmother is. But what a boy he doesn't know. When he gets old enough to know. Yeah, he's gonna be happy. He's gonna be proud, proud of you? Yes. Yes. <laughs> so what are some of your goals? Um, um, our goals, our main goals is to be, I don't know, it's the first thing is make my grandfather happy, but, you know, to be successful, just, I don't know, I guess like be like them. That, that was one of my goals. I so just, just growing up in a household that they grew up in, just being able to, take care of business and, you know, I'll see you out here a lot of days, a lot of the homes broken, like, between me and my son, it's already broken, I don't know how I can fix that, <clears throat> but I, I know from here on, you know, my next step in life, in my relationship, is to have a successful one, and then, you know, be successful financially. And just be able to, you know, take care of my own business, you know, not depend on, you would say, per se, the government to help me out or anything. So you want a successful relationship? And be successful in business, yeah. Not, not a relationship. Not a I mean, relationship? You don't no. want a successful No, no. Like marriage. I don't know. I don't want to just say relationships. Oh, it's just you like want to get married. Dating, want to get, yeah, you get married, like, and have a family. Like I said, like my, like my grandparents. My buddy Rod, uh, they got married back on 9, 10, 11. I was a doing man in the wedding. I'd say I, I caught the garter belt, so. Did that make you think about getting married? Yeah, I mean, just his, his wedding made me think about getting married, grabbing Car belt maybe think about getting it. it. It's something that I want to do. I've always seen myself doing, like growing up in the eighties watching, you know, the Cosby show, you know, or the even going further back to Walton's the, the feel good, you know, sitcoms before Roseanne came out and told you this is how it is <laughs> in most of America. So are you happy where you are right now? No. No? No, but uh, it's getting better. It's getting better. Starting what are you not happy about? Well, I've, people just tell, like, no. I don't, I'm not where I should be. I'm not where I thought I would be. Uh, you said people are telling you? No, 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 people, like, like my, my grandfather, he hates that I bartend, you know. He just wants me to, you know, do, do something business-wise. You know, I offered, I would go over, maybe I could go over to the islands and help run and learn the business that he has over there. But I kind of wants us to stay over here in the States and, and figure out what we're doing. So you're not where you thought you'd be at this point in your life? No. No, if I look back like when I was 10 and 12 years old, I would, I would have been like, no, that's not me. What do you think um, you would be doing? I, I would have my own business. I always saw myself like I modeled myself after my grandfather. He, he was a baker for a while, but then, you know, he started his own 
community, adult community facility in. You know, now he has a construction business in the British Virgin Islands. It's just doesn't work for anybody but himself. So. So what happened in your path to owning your own business to go to a part of it? I started, I mean, going to school, I, I don't know, I had the grant and everything and just hanging out with the wrong people, didn't go to school and almost flunked out and then I had to start paying for school myself. My manager is a real nice guy, this is back in Orlando, I, was, I said, now I need to work part time and make full time money. He said, you need to be a bartender. And then I started researching it. And I, I, I got into that I got to that field. And you're still there. And I'm still there, yeah. And I, I, I have a degree and I, I didn't use it. I, I just got caught up in the trap. I didn't want to take the the hit for like two years, you know. People were offering me a job, you know, eight to ten bucks an hour, get my experience and I was averaging, you know, twenty bucks an hour bar ticket. So it's hard to turn that down. That kind of that money. Was, at that time, yeah, I was like, that decision was hard to talk to, very hard. So would you say now that you're stuck? Uh, I would say I'm stuck because I'm not just bartending. You know, like I said, I have, I have the other job, the relationships that I've built from where I work. Like I worked in like a high-end area, you know, and meet like meet so doctors. So you're and using works. your bartending connections at your other job. Yes. Yes, I, and I've made a lot of connections. Yes, so I, I mean, I've doesn't closed. that even tie you even closer to your bartending job, which we thought you were trying to get away from? Uh, yeah, yeah, probably could. I mean, but I mean, if you run into doctors and lawyers, and dentists all the time, or the entrepreneurs, it's just. I don't know where my, where my leads are. I mean, I, I get leads from other places, but I'm not just solely working off those leads, but I'm having good success there. And sometimes I may be having better success out because the people that I know, they don't associate me with the bar. So they, they get back to me sooner. They don't just go, oh, then hey, I'll come and I'll meet you at the bar. And I'm like, no, when I'm there, I'm. You know, the bartending most we, we talk and I go, hey, here's my card, let's talk later. You know, I don't want, uh, somebody wanted to come and throw out the paperwork at the bar. I'm like, let's, you come to the corporate office or we can, you know, go have lunch and do it somewhere. They probably, you know, they probably wouldn't like me doing the other job on their time, but. So when you go around town, are you seen as Devin the bartender? Is that your persona? Uh, it's been so long, it still is, yes, because I've only been in this job for like six months, so, you know, six months to six years, it's gonna take a little time. I think you kind of like that, don't you? Like the what? I think you like it. People recognize you. Yeah. I mean, who, who doesn't? <laughs> So, I mean, sometimes it can get on your nerves, but for the most part, yeah, that's fine. That, that basically led into me feeling I'm not where I'm supposed to be. That, that's, you know, I hear it from my grandfather mostly, uh, the girl dating. And what about you? What do you want? Oh, I said I want, you know. Actually, if you're happy, can you tell everybody else? I'm happy. You worry about your own life. I'm living my life. I'm happy. But where I pictured myself is not there. Where I pictured myself is pretty much, you know, what they pictured for me. They see me doing more, you know. And my, my grandmother, she doesn't, she tells me, she's still so nice, she, she tells me in a nice way, she doesn't like tear me down, but she's like, you know, you should, you know, be doing 
what are you doing? And then my like my friends, you know, they go, What's going on? What's new? Like like they expect or they anticipate like she be doing something. I had, I had a buddy actually a couple months ago and I'll never forget this, he said to me, he's like, Hey Devin, talk to me, he's like, Why aren't you doing that? I was you know how you hear those things from some people? That that's the thing he said to me that I never forget. And I, I, every time I see him, I talk to him, I think about that. So it's it's people like that that go, you know. And then I think that's what my grandmother, um, my grandfather is, is saying, you know, because he raised me. And he's, you know, he sees the potential and he's like, what, what are you doing? And I'm like, all I hear you talk about is everybody else. What do you think? Well, I think I think he's right. I think my grandfather's right. You know. Do you think I you could have potential for more. I could have I could have been doing more in a habit somehow. Why having? I was just I guess I was in a comfort zone. I was just. Aren't you still in that comfort zone? Uh, no, I'm losing my way second in seniority there. So I was asked, what, what did I, you know. After who? After the, the head guy, Ramon. How old is Ramon? Nobody knows. <laughs> How old would you say he is? Oh, man, I would, I would have to say Ramon is. Bartending isn't the only thing that he does. No, no, no. He has a business. Uh, he has a business, and his wife is a nurse. Mm -hmm. So yeah, he has two jobs. Also, I mean, I'm not saying that if I find if I get myself into a position where I'm making the money that I don't need that. Yes, I'll be gone. As long as you were thinking, there's someone else there who is older than you, who is successful. I just think you might be thinking, I can be like him, and I can also work here, and I can also do my own thing, and I can be successful. Mm -hmm. So I just, I can't imagine that you know, working at a job, and if you were the oldest one there, that would bother you. No, it wouldn't, because I go to other bars, and I see bartenders there, you know, the same age as people that are bagging groceries, because, you know, they can't find any work. So, if I had to be in a position, I'd rather know my craft, in case of hard times, I don't have to bartend or bag groceries, I know how to bartend. No, no, I'm not blaming anything on the economy. I just look, and people are taking positions like where you know they're there like, are I'm jobs very out over. there, so it can be done. It can be done. I just know I, can. I have a trade that you know, I have a skill with a trade that I can, if push comes to shove, and I need to fall back on. Okay. I don't want to. I'm not saying I want to. I'm not saying you're going, I can't wait, like after I, I work my way out of there, that I have to go back and bartend. I don't want to defend bartending. I don't want to. I'm trying to get out of it. How long have you been trying? How long have I been trying? I've been trying. I would probably say, really trying? Probably a little over a year. So what have you tried? 
doing your job. Mm -hmm. That's that's all that I mean. That's all that is. It's a job. So I have to get a job, and you know that. So job, paint, job, career. Well, that's two different things. Yeah. Which one do you want? A career. You said job. Uh, uh, I mean, tomato, tomato. No! <laughs> That's really two different things. Well, when I say it, I'm, you know, I have a career right now. And actually, you know, to some people, there's some people out there that made a career out of bartending. Yeah, his name is Ramon. But he has a, he has a second music business. Ramon, you're a mentor. I'm not saying that's what I'm going to tell you. Um, four t-shirts on habit. So, you've been trying to get a job. How have you been trying? I put my resume out there, talking about other buddies of mine that, you know. So, submitting applications online? I'll submit my resume. Uh, and I have all these buddies that say they can hook me up. Which so, networking? Really, yeah, never happened. Sure. Until after I got my job, then, I mean, three or four of them, like, I get you in doing this, I get you in doing that, and I'm like, I got some. So you're relying heavily on networking, right? A recruiter that was a friend of mine on Facebook, mm -hmm. and I clicked on something that he posted. Oh. Like he was looking for people, and I go, I fit that. And I called him up, he's like, yeah. Come on, do this, do that. So yeah. is that your bartending Facebook page? I said, yes, it is. Your bartending Facebook page work appropriate, would you say? For uh, the normal working world? For bartending, it is. No, I didn't say bartending. <coughs> like, day job? yeah. No. No? Uh, most days it is. But, every now and then. What would you say that's on there that's inappropriate? Well, it would be. I mean, other people's posts. There wouldn't be inappropriately dressed females, would there? On my pictures? On your page? Not that I know of. Unless somebody no? posted something. Not at all. No. Look at your look. No, I mean, I have a. Guys are like, who's the pictures of like me behind the bar? A bunch of other guys. So, how's that going to affect you when you try to transition into the regular working world where you will be fully dressed around people who are also fully dressed? I, I have a job where I'm fully dressed around people. You know, every time I I go to the corporate office, fully dressed, you know. And nobody's can't come in, you can't, your page. You can't come into the office wearing jeans. So it hasn't affected you at all? Nobody's seen anything? No. Nobody's made any comments? Uh, they want to come in and do a uh, So people from the day job, find out that you bartended and they want to come and see you? Well, they've been to the place before and they heard about it and they know about it. And I work with 
mostly guys. Now if I've had guys to come in and some of my coworkers come in. So it hasn't negatively no negative impact at all. Oh no, not at all. that you were trying to get a new job where no one knew you, let's say in a different town. And then they found your Facebook and you looked like, you know, you were boozing it up. How do you think that might influence someone's perception of you without knowing you? It would be, it would, I would think, if I was a person, I'd be, I'd be thinking, he's not thinking clearly. He obviously knows we're going to check. Because I, I would have gone and scrubbed my Facebook before anybody could come and check it. So it's not, it's like I'm not wrapping up ends, you know, to a better my image. It's like going and fixing your resume before you, you know. Check for any corrections. But if so. someone didn't know you and they found that, let's just say they found it somehow, they hacked it, whatever, what would their perception of you be? Uh, good question. Maybe, would be like, a loser. No? It be, it'd be more of a, of a promoter. This guy's trying to get people to come in by drinks for him. That's what you look like. That's what you think you look like? On the page? Mm -hmm. Come in. Hey, come on in. Come on in. I'm working in that. Come on in. That's what you're posting. That's what yeah. your status is saying. Yeah. What about the actual pictures? What do they say? Uh, good looking guy. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm trying to think, of, I'm looking at my pictures now and, uh... Pretend you're someone else. Uh... Pretend you're an older gentleman. Looking at your pictures. What would you think? They'd probably look at the pictures and say... Uh, he's, uh... He's diverse. That's it, you know. Probably most of white people. So, um. you have a very positive self perception. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, on that, that page, they, you know, they, I don't know who, who you're talking about. I mean, if you give me a person, they're like 10 different people who might look at it 10 different ways. So, All you're giving me is positivity. I mean, uh... Okay, well, uh, let's just okay. change it. What would I think if I looked at it? Uh, be, I mean, if you've been to... You would think this is a bar, okay. It's, it's, a, place, it's a place to go check out. No, it's me. It's really me. And I know you. What would I think? Uh, eh. You'd probably be upset. I'd be mad. Yeah. Why would I be mad? I don't know. Uh, pictures of me all bottles turned over, acting like I'm drinking. Uh, well, that's normal. Uh, no, I'll do that anymore. Charity event for a charity fashion show, so the picture on there would be like shirtless for charity, so 
and people have to, you know, they have to see, oh, you know, it's a show. Oh, what is it for? And you, that's for charity. I was like, I had to get upset for somebody to like that. And there's, I mean, the, the checks and balances. Actually, I don't, I don't know. The pictures, you, you know. I mean, Probably, you'd probably find something to be upset about. I don't know. I would just find something. I would dig until I found something <laughs> to be upset about. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> That's what I'm thinking, yeah. So nothing you could specifically say, but you know that I would be upset. You just, you just want to be upset. I, I just want to be upset. Yeah. Why would I just want to be upset? Because you don't know, like that place. You don't know, like where I'm farting, just like my grandfather. I want you to want more for yourself. Yeah, you know. You know and if you're like happy, I, then you're happy. <sighs> you know, the way I feel has to do with me. Why don't you like the place? I mean, but I, but I have to, or bartend in a gay bar or something, or what? Would that, that change it? To do with I don't know, because there's girls running all around where I bartend. Girls go to gay bars all the time. Girls are running all around where I bartend. So just bartending in general? Like I said, I want you to want more for yourself. I want more for myself. Maybe it's because I'm working two jobs, I don't want more. Is that what you're saying? No, I'm just talking about more to me. I can't change what you want for yourself. I know I want more for myself. And I wish you did too, and if you don't, you don't. Things I do is what I was talking about. Because I think I'm not showing it, I get another job. But I still have to work there because this job right here isn't covering anything right now. So I have to feel like yeah. can't wait. I can't wait. This is how I feel. I feel like it'll never be enough.